Hi, so today I would like to talk about Hecate. No, not the common misconceptions about Hecate, as the representation of the young female, the adult female and the crone, but about triple-faced Hecate Epigorgidia, representing in Neoplatonic terms the physis or matter, the ether or the cosmic mass of space, and the ignis in the aspect of the divine fire. This is a purely Neoplatonic interpretation and I will start with Neoplatonism and we will move back in time trying to face and uh, trying to find the roots of the goddess herself. Now this is a statue uh, that is a representation from Hadrianic classicistic times. We may find this statue, this relief in the Prague Museum and uh, we have uh, triple females wearing a heaton and uh, polos as the connection to Rhea or time. Let's for a while switch to this particular uh, descriptive. It is a comparative system, system of comparative uh, understanding of the theology and hierarchy of the Platonic, Orphic, Chaldean, Jamblichian, Proclean and pseudo Dionysians of Aeropa Dionysian Aeropagite uh, systems. So here in the Chaldean system we have Dynamis as Hecate or Anima Mundi, the world soul and force, power. Uh, this is one of the elements of the triangles or the triads in which the world is formed in anteformative stage or antecosmic stage. This is the pater or the transcendent fire, the dynamis and nous, the intellect. So uh, as we see and move lower, there is Kronos and Rhea. Now Polos, the head where the crown is representing Rhea and uh, Hera as the goddess of the time flow of the things that flow that is in associated with Kronos, Ion, time and also the lower Hecate that is a membrane girdled with serpents that is Ouroboros as the self-consuming time. So what is she holding? She is holding twin flames which is resemblant of the Mitre Cautus and Cautopatus that is entry from the sun, the birth of souls the entombment in the Dionysian grave or the body and the reascend to superlunar realities and the planetary spheres and the stars. So it's all about the journey, the Odyssey or Odus. Odyssey meant a journey and Odysseus meant a journeyer, a traveler. So Hecate is also holding a uh, Yinges which was also a magical artifact. It was uh, used uh, commonly to spin it and it created buzzing sounds to emit uh, magical potencies, for example. And it is also an emulation of Yinges that are associated with the Chaldean system with the triad of Therese Yinges Empyrean Aetherian and Helias, although material, ketonic, associated with matter, subterrestrial things, and the cosmic voids like Tartarus or the Titans. So, um, returning to our interpretation, uh, it is very interesting that in the tarot card La Luna from the Marseille's tarot, there is a cancer emerging from the water, that is, the soul is given birth and sun in cancer and the solar in the summer equinox and then exits through the moon in Capricorn. On the tarot card from the Marseilles edition we have also the dogs barking the Artemisian Hecatic dogs barking at the journey in Cancer that is going to Apollyon transformation back into a purified soul, uh, Agathus Daimon, an angel, an archangel, or a deity. 
So <clears throat> the significance of dogs and the loyalty howling at the moon and so on so on may be retraced, retraced also back to Anubis, the dog-headed one, and often in neoplatonic forms Herm Anubis, a syncretic combina combination of Hermes and Anubis, is the mm, psychopomp and the connector and the one who carries messages in between those three worlds, those three higher worlds, and communicates to the lower worlds. So there is the hermeneutic, hermeneian aspect of the limiting interpreting of the hypophets. Now returning back to Hecate, this is the neoplatonic, let's say, <coughs> first the physis aspect, or the terrifying goddess, and it's about a bit, a bit like Mahakali, for example, in Hinduism or Shivakali in the wrathful aspect which is commanding the tonic forces of demons and what Julian de Theurgis called the army of violent combustible dogs. So the dogs are representing again in the martial tarot, La Luna, the demons of the tonic spheres that are trying to strip off the impurities before the soul may ascend or to cut the journey short if a person that is an initiate is withdrawing or breaks. Now in the aspect of uh, Ether, she was uh, symbolizing the waterways and the seals of the cosmic waterways, similar to Ingus that were the magical words, seals and symbols that were carried throughout the universe and seeded divine messages all over the universe. In the Ignis aspect, she was uh, the divine fire, or the fire of the intellectual soul, of the spirited faculty in Galenian terms. All right. So, hmm. I would like to return to a portrait of Hecate by Patricia A. Malkart in the Journal of Philology, Autumn 1981, Volume 102, Number 3. Because I would like to retrace certain origins of Hecate. Now, the old formula of Hecate was found in Hesiod. So we have it uh, that she was most popular in Caria, which is nowadays south southmost western part of uh, Turkey. So in Caria, Hecate enjoyed much of the dignity and political importance, mm, and she appeared with Apollo as the protectress of entrance, and similar in the. Chaldean oracles of the Chaldean system, it is said that both Hecate and Apollo are influencing Julian the Theurgis when he interprets in a hypothetic act the divine messages of gods and goddesses and thus writes down the oracles, which was like a class A text for every Theurgist and magician of the mid-neoplatonic tradition. Now, if we... <coughs> try to find more in-depth information, one Kraus will place her arrival as early as the Mycenaean age, and I believe such an interpretation because it is based on very, very extensive research of previous scholars, and uh, the Hecate was portrayed often as the mistress of the wild animals, just like Artemis. So, uh, the same goddess presumably could either foster animal life or destroy it in the manner of Artemis in the Homeric hymn. Now, how did it acquire a form that was known later. Well, let's see. I hope I didn't lose the... Hmm. Uh, yes. 
Yeah. Hmm. I am trying to find the goddess with which she was associated. All right. Okay, it was still here. Yeah. Hecate Epigurgidia stood in the 5th century near the entrance to the Athenian Acropolis, as I have mentioned before. Oh, this. So, Theodor Kraus theorizes that Hecate was transformed from a great goddess, like the Hesiodic Hecate, into a goddess of witchcraft through identification with Thessalian road goddess Einodia, who appeared in Athens in the 5th century carrying with her strong traditions of Thessalian witchcraft. So it is possible that Magna Mater of Caria and previously of the Minoan Mycenaean religions was fused with the Einodia as a, a form of representation of witchcraft, Italian witchcraft, with two neoplatonists would be the Hecate physis aspect, the terrible Hecate that is wearing a mascara or a mask to the initiates because they would be frozen by terror if they would see her true form of the underworld of the tonic aspect so before that before she merged with Einodia and became the goddess of witchcraft we can move back to the Minoan Mycenaean religion and its survival in Greek religion by uh, a scholar called Glarup. And all over the place, in, for example, Knossos, we may find images of serpent girdled goddesses that is a mistress of animals. For example, uh, Potnia Teron, a mistress of animals. During the Minoan Mycenaean age, there was also a Potnios Teron, a master of animals. The mother of mountain seal impression from Knossos belongs formally to this class. The goddess is standing between two heraldically placed lions, but here we have an actual cult stand with the shrine and the votary. If we want to look for serpents, hmm. The mother goddess is arrayed in the usual flounce skirt and open bodice with a fine rampant lion on either side. Below her feet, three lines make a kind of exerg, and above her head is a ritual object formed apparently of snakes, from the center of which rises the sacred symbolic double axe. Let us remember that the Ophetic, Uraic, or Dracontes traditions were considered holy. Every religion apart from Abrahamic religion held those animals as uh, sacred initiatory animals. And it is even told that when the holy men of the heathens or the pagans, nobilities, nobilitas, passed away, there was a sight of snakes escaping. You can look at the reliefs of certain urns, for example, urn of one Isidore that there is a serpent emerging from the urn as if testifying that this man's soul emerged as a purified soul, as a hero, as an angel, as, as an archangel. So, um, as for the um, origin of the name Hecate, it is highly improbable that it is uh, linked to Hekao, or Egyptian Kemetic term for magic, because Hekau was uh, spelled differently. So even if Hecate, Hecaton, Hecatos, Hecatea, Hecatos, for example, to a verb that is active, would mean to create or make magic. And uh, the very idea of Hekka in Egypt was understood as an impersonal force penetrating all the universe, a bit like the force in Star Wars, for example, in the modern mythology. Now, given all this, do we think that such a goddess going through so many mutations throughout centuries, replaced by one Levantine raped girl called Miriam on the crossroads, when uh, she has fallen into disfavor, the great goddess Hecate, 
in the eyes of the Judeo-Christians. And uh, how can we explain the evolution of the perception of the divine forces in a civilized manner? That from a uh, great goddess of the animals and serpents, some mysteries of the Uraic ideas were preserved of the Ophetic ideas. She was discovered as that finely intellectually tuned triple faced goddess into that triple mysteries of Hecate of which Paulina speaks about in uh, Laudatio Funebris to Agorius Pretextatus to her most beloved husband that passed away and was slandered by Saint Jerome. So let me just give you a hint that one of those mysteries is contained in the moon and it is also linked to the ancient temple of Ehulhul, ancient temple of Sin, the moon god in Ehulhul in Haran that his mysteries lasted for three and a half thousand years uninterrupted until the Muslim conquest. And I won't make it any easier for you to discover it, because it's a secret that you must discover for yourselves. Thank you.